Hi, I'm Miss Kristen of the Oosterhout Free Library. What animal sleeps by day, flies by night, but has no feathers? You've probably guessed that it's a bat. Did you know that bats are really our friends? They actually eat a thousand insects a day and other bats help pollinate flowers to make seeds to grow new plants. Bats are actually very shy and gentle creatures. And today I have a fun book called Bats at the Library. One evening, these book loving bats discover an open window at the library. I wonder what these bats might do at the library. Can you guess? We'll also learn a bit about bats and I'll show you how to make an easy bat that flies. Let's get started with Bats at the Library. Bats at the Library, written and illustrated by Brian Lees and published by Houghton Mifflin Books. Another inky evening's here. The air is cool and calm and clear. We feasted, fluttered, swooped, and soared. And yet, we're still a little bored. All this sameness leaves us blue and makes us ache for something new. Then word spreads quickly from afar. A window has been left ajar. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes, bat night at the library. The sky is lively as we race together toward our favorite place. Eager wings beat autumn air. Look, that's it. We're almost there. Then squeeze together, wing to wing. We rocket through the opening. We've waited for this night all year, but this is it at last. We're here. For most old bats, this isn't new. They've got lots of things to do. They'll flutter off and lose themselves among the books lined up on shelves. Other bats in munchy moods will study guides to fancy foods or hang out by a lamp instead to talk about the books they've read. But little bats will have to learn the reason that we must return. The ones who haven't come before have no idea what's in store. Some of them will drift away and figure out a game to play, like shaping shadows on the wall or wingtip tag around the hall. This big box is loads of fun, blasting brighter than the sun. Instead of copying books from shelves, we can duplicate ourselves. Doesn't matter where you look, there's nothing like a pop-up book. The fountain water's nice and cool and makes a splendid swimming pool. Please keep it down, you must behave. This library's not your cave. It's hard to settle down and read when life flits by at dizzy speed. But story time is just the thing to rest a play exhausted wing. And if we listen, we will hear some distant voices drawing near. Louder, louder, louder still. They coax and pull us in until Everyone, old bat or pup, has been completely swallowed up and lives inside a book instead 
of simply hearing something red. Breathless, lost within the tale, no one sees the sky grow pale. What is that light? A lamp? The moon? Our bookish feast can't end so soon. It feels as though we've just begun, but now we leave our books half done. Through the window into the sky, it's much too late, we've got to fly. But maybe a librarian will give us bats this chance again and leave a window open wide to let us share the world inside. For now, we'll dream of things we've read, a universe inside each head. Every evening, one and all, will listen for that late night call. Can it be true? Oh, can it be? Yes! Bat night at the library! The end. Those bats sure had fun reading some of their favorite books and imagined themselves in all sorts of the adventures from the books that they were reading. Did you recognize any? There's Little Red Riding Hood, Aladdin, Alice in Wonderland, Make Way for Ducklings, and so many more. That story was a lot of fun. So be sure to check out more of the Bats Adventures in the rest of the Bats books by Brian Lees. They're available at the library. Now, while Bats don't usually live in a library, I can say that many years ago, a bat did get into the Ooster house through an open window, just like the story. In fact, the windows in the book remind me of the library's windows. That was pretty funny. I was not expecting to see a bat in the library. Lucky for us, it was only one bat and one of our librarians was able to gently guide the bat back outside. But there are actually some very old libraries in a country called Portugal that keep bats in their library on purpose. Yep, that's because the bats will eat the insects that eat the very old books that they have. So they actually want to have bats in their library. That's pretty funny too. But where do bats normally live? And why are they so important to us? Well, let's take a closer look at this book and find out. Bats by Elizabeth Carney and published by National Geographic Books. What's a bat? A bat is a mammal, and mammals are animals that nurse their young, have hair, and are warm and blooded. Humans, dogs, and whales are all mammals, but bats have a special ability. They can fly. Did you know that while you're fast asleep, Bats are busy filling their bellies. Bats are nocturnal, meaning they're active at night. Insect-eating bats often feast on bugs that come out after dark. Pollen and nectar-eating bats might feed on plants that only open at night. Nectar is a sweet liquid made by flowers. Hanging out. When bats are not hunting for food, they're usually hiding in a roost. Roosts can be caves, treetops, or even attics. Bats pick places that are well hidden and protect them from bad weather. When most bats are in their roost, they hang upside down. Nature's Helpers. A world without bats wouldn't be very nice. Bats are an important part of the ecosystem. Insect-eating bats gobble up millions of bugs. Many of these insects are pests that could harm humans or destroy crops.
Bats keep their numbers under control. Other bats keep forests healthy by spreading seeds and pollen. This allows trees and flowers to multiply. If you want to learn a little bit more about bats, then check out many of the books like this one that we have at the library. You can make your own bat paper airplane that actually flies. I'll include a link in the description box below to this printable that you can print out at home or you can stop by the library at the Youth Services desk to pick up some of your own. You could even just use a blank piece of paper and then draw the bat in this section that I'm going to show you. The directions are printed on the paper, but I'm going to demonstrate to you how to fold it today. First, you have to start by coloring your bat whichever way you like, or drawing your bat if you're going to use a blank piece of paper. And you would do that in this section of the, the printable. The first step you're going to do is fold the paper along line one, which is clearly marked right here. So you're going to fold that right along that line like that. That's what it's going to look like on the back. Then step two, you're going to fold the corner down along the line away from the side that it's on. So it's going to go over to here, just like that. This is what it's going to look like in the back. This is what it looks like in the front. Step three, you're going to fold it in half along line three, which is right here the middle of the bat, so that the bat faces out. And it's going to look just like that. Step four, you're going to fold the wings along the line, like this, just like that. Fold that there, fold this one right here. Right there, just like that. And then step five, if you wish, you can fold the wings right along the side right here. The wing tips will go up. It's easy peasy. And then you will have your own bat that flies. See what kind of ventures your bat can get into, just like the bats at the library. So stop by the youth services desk and pick up some bat paper airplanes. And while you're there, go on the pumpkin scavenger hunt. Stop by the desk, pick up your scavenger hunt sheet, then find all nine hidden pumpkins in the youth services department and you can get a free book. I hope you had fun, keep exploring and I'll see you next time. Bye.